Hi, this is David, and this is a weird video. <laughs> I've had 27 or 8,000 hits in two months, three months, whatever it's been since, <laughs> since I started the David Show, which is really a plagiarized the Mormon show. <laughs> I've had four people give me comments. I said, you're not funny. <laughs> I don't think you're funny. You laugh at your own jokes. I have no jokes. I have no written routine. I don't even have notes. It's just my Mormon experience. I had a very interesting comment today, and I'm going to share it with you. <laughs> Here it is. This one guy wrote to me and said, you could make millions as a stand-up comic. Now this guy's either drunk, he's on drugs, <laughs> he's mentally retarded, I'm a special ed, he rode the little bus <laughs> to school. Okay, now here's what I'm going to say. If I can make millions being a stand-up comic, I can't stand up that long. <laughs> How much does a sit-down comic make? <laughs> I know the blue comedy guys, they stand up some of the time, but they'll sit on the benches so I could join them at the end on the uh, little stools. Okay, so here's what I want to do. And my brother, <laughs> I don't know how we carry the same genes. <laughs> he must have been a mutation. I don't know. But my brother says, you're not funny. <laughs> and all you do is criticize and try to bring people down to your level. Well, I didn't know <laughs> my level was that low. Now, being a Mormon for 50 years, I have to admit, I don't know much about society. I, don't, I have very poor social skills. <laughs> I, I don't know what's right and what's wrong. Once I came out of the cult, I knew all the rules of the cult and I obeyed them. But when I thrust myself out with resignation, I um, I have no idea what you say to men, what you say to women, and <laughs> I have learned from some experiences that um, <clears throat> there are certain things you don't say in real society and certain things you don't do. Um, <laughs> riding the handicap chair <laughs> in Walmart, chasing little kids, <laughs> they don't like that over there. They have cameras watching. I didn't know they had cameras. Uh, I didn't know that wasn't accepted. And, uh, you know, I have a car, one of them, with a, uh, a sunroof in it. Well, I thought that sunroof <laughs> was to open and they give the finger <laughs> to whoever is bugging me. Well, <laughs> you don't do that in society. <laughs> and I've learned day by day by day, there are certain things you don't say and certain things uh, you don't do. Now, I, I need the general public's opinion here because my brother, he's bipolar, but he doesn't take meds. <laughs> so why is he in a third world country with his name changed and living in a squatter's camp? <laughs> I don't know, but I think it might be meds. At least I have a house and a car and a driver's license, okay? And it's really my name, David. <laughs> so, my brother puts a lot of pressure on me because he doesn't like all you people looking at me. He says, those people don't know what they're looking at. <laughs> I said, well, okay. But they continue to look, so I must either be saying something doing something or whatever they seem to want to know some things about my experience in the mormon church i don't mean it to be comical I, you know i never sat down you can take a look at my earlier videos i think i got 350 out now or something and i wasn't trying to be funny but as i've gotten more and more into the silliness and the circus and clown act of the mormon church and the more i've read and the more i've discovered I think it's funny, and because I wasn't allowed to laugh for 50 years, I wasn't allowed to have light-mindedness, I wasn't allowed to, to speak ill against the Lord's anointed, um, I have this all bottled up in me a half a century of wanting to say something, but if I did, I'd lose my wife, my kids, my family, my job, 
my house, everything, and my cars. I'm kind of a car fanatic, I guess. My mother, uh, my mother. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I want your attention and I want your opinion. Do, <laughs> this may be, fu it's funny to me. It may not be funny to you, I don't know. Do you think I could go up on stage? I have no stage fright because I'm bipolar. I don't give a shit what people think or do. Do you think I could go up on stage and talk about the Mormon church and actually get paid for it? Now, here's my idea, and you guys tell me because I don't know. I was in a cult for half a century. What if I got up on stage and I had no um, script, no dialogue? And I simply say to the audience, could we pass the mic around? And if you have any questions about the Mormon church, I will give you the best experience that I've had. And I, they would be like the videos. You know, I find some humorous things that uh, the Mormon church does. And so maybe for a half an hour, 40 minutes, we could pass the microphone around and people could say, well, you know, I heard that their children have two heads because uh, the incest is so high. And I say, well, no, they have four arms. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making that crap up now, okay? So I'm thinking, you know, I want the real world's opinion. I don't want Mormon opinion. I want you people that are normal Catholics and Baptists and Lutherans and atheists, Buddhas and Muslims to go, hey, you know, I, I think you got something to it there. Uh, if you sat in a chair and just answered questions the way you do your videos, there may be people that want to come and uh, see your, it's not a show, what would it be? Your, your answering session? I don't know, even know what you would call it. But anyway, please, um, if any of you have any time on the comments, and I know most of you are busy, most of you don't give a rat's ass, and I understand that. If I get one comment, I'll be happy. If I get none, I'll go, oh well, <laughs> it was a shit idea. <laughs> But please, tell me from a normal person's perspective, you know me pretty well by now. Um, I will put pants on <laughs> if I go on stage. Just underpants, though. No real overpants. Uh, and I'm thinking of maybe wearing garments on the outside, you know, and I don't have a name for my show. But anyway, you know, we're, when you're bipolar, you have these grandiose ideas. And, um, you know, I just may be a little on meds. <laughs> You know, I went to the, I have to share this with you. I went to the doctor today, okay? And I always go to the doctor before shit happens. I don't like to go when my heart has stopped. It's hard to walk in there when you're dead. So I've been um, having memory loss. I can't remember short-term memory. I'm missing off-ramps that I've driven on for 20 or 30 years. I, I go to one room to another and I can't remember <laughs> what I was going for. I just, right now, I just lost my glasses. I was just reading in the car. <laughs> and I have extra, <laughs> extra glasses because I know I lose glasses. So anyway, oh, and this one, <laughs> I'm getting way off the subject. I am really quite uh, handy with Gorilla Glue. Now, if you've not ever used Gorilla Glue, you're missing life. I've never found a glue that works. Gorilla Glue works. I think I told you I have that strap that goes around and it goes around my head and it's here so I won't lose my glasses and it dangles down. But the strap wore out. So I put the strap on and then I super glued it. And I, you know, just put it on. And then like three hours later, um, I needed my glasses and I pulled them. I tried to pull them down, they wouldn't come down. I go, what the, <laughs> what happened? I have my glasses. Well, they were super glued <laughs> to my bald head. <laughs> so I'm going, shit, I'm getting old. I, I have the strap. <laughs> so I have glasses, but now I'm so damn dumb, <laughs> I super glue it to my head. Well, I didn't want to be embarrassed, uh, which is most of my life these days. <laughs> in old age and so I'm there in the car and my wife's in Walmart <laughs> and if you have to pull Gorilla Glue off of your your head there's going to be a red mark there <laughs> so my wife comes out to the car and she looks at me she says what the hell happened to the side of your head and I said oh you noticed <laughs> she goes yeah I said, well it, it was an accident it was super glue <laughs> so the other day 
I broke these glasses and I go, I'm not going to let him rip me off another 10 bucks. I mean, I mean, you know, here's my $1 flag and that's my only prop and I only have this one pair of glasses here. So I go, all right. So I put my glasses down on the desk and I, I couldn't find the super glue because I can't remember shit. The doctor says I have CRS, which is can't remember shit. And so I put the glasses down on the desk there and I super glued them. And I found you have to kind of wait overnight. But once you've waited overnight, those glasses are fixed. Well, I went to put them on in the morning <laughs> and the bastards were glued to that table. I have my glasses on with a computer table sticking out of the front. I go, God, you know, again, getting old gracefully. So I went to the doctor today because I was a little worried I'm losing some memory and Alzheimer's keeps whispering in my ear like the old Holy Ghost did. <laughs> Marry another wife, have a thousand kids. So I went to the doctor's office and um, I was sitting there in the chair and I thought, now, why am I here? <laughs> Jeez. He's gonna ask me when I walk in, well, why did you come in today? And I go, God, I can't remember. Why did I come in today? And I sat there for like five or 10 minutes and I go, Oh shit, it's about memory. I didn't remember I was coming in for memory exam. So I go over to the desk and I say, do you have a pen or a pencil? Let me write down why I'm here. So I wrote it down and I go, hey, you know, I got this, <laughs> I got this. I'm just gonna walk in and read my notes and say memory. So they called my name and said, David. I, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. So I walk in and they go, well, why are you here? I said, I don't know. I took notes. I think I can't remember where the notes are. So I had to run back out in the damn lobby and I had left my notes on the chair. So I run back and said, oh, it's memory. <laughs> he goes, oh, I can see. <laughs> so uh, what's my point? My, my point is, I guess, overall, uh, it's kind of fun to get old. Uh, it's not all that fun. Uh, but, um, you know, you got to deal with the, the best with it uh, as you can. And so if I was sitting on stage and answering Mormon questions, uh, I might even have three or four or a panel, five people uh, sit there and, and discuss the Mormon church and my experience in it. I don't know if that's an interest. I don't know if there's enough interest out there that somebody would want to do that. And so anyway, give me a comment and say, <laughs> you're not funny. <laughs> you, you Keep your day job. <laughs> keep your day job and then there's others of you who are drinking and drugging then and you might say hey you, you got some funny shit there so anyway even if I had an audience that's just alcoholics it would make me feel better and my brother I could do one of these uh, hiding in the Philippines <laughs> and saying I don't know why people listen to you the words mean nothing uh, I, I'm going to be famous <laughs> There's not too many people in squatters camps in the Philippines that become famous, but you know, I'm not going to say too much. So anyway, if you think I could do a sit down comedy act <laughs> and anybody would be possibly interested. Now the tickets would be cheap. I'm thinking like at 10 cents. <laughs> could I fill an auditorium at 10 cents? Let me know. Thanks.